Alex Hansry here. This is a special report. It is October 28th, 2016. We're going to talk about the Bundy trial. And I believe that the fact that they have been found not guilty is even more evidence that the whole operation may have been a setup. Now, bear with me. Now, I remember the trolls that came out of the woodwork during my podcast series last winter. And I produced at least 10 videos on the situation. I talked about Pete Santilli. He's also been found not guilty. Now, we're talking about an alternative media radio host that at one point joked about Hillary Clinton being shot in the vagina. And in other online broadcasts, he encourages listeners to actually attack military cargo, saying it was for martial law. And so, Pete Santilli is one particular character in this uh, interesting cast of characters. But he's not the only one. Other people came on the radar as being um, individuals that seem more than a little bit shady. People like Blaine Cooper and Ritzmeyer. Ritzmeyer is the one who's famous for that video. Daddy made an oath. You know, it sounded like a... Um, a suicide letter. Here are some things that came out recently. And here we are, almost a year after this situation. Fifteen government informants were involved behind the scenes. The only one that they're talking about is a John Kilman, who posed at the refuge as a tactical trainer and weapons instructor. Some of the evidence that they were using in their case came from Blaine Cooper's cell phone which showed the firearms training at the wildlife refuge so if you like I watched a lot of the footage that was coming out of the Pete Santilli channel as well as the stuff that he was deleting or editing out that was actually caught on the live stream by the Connors report there was a lot of revealing things to take in from that whole situation. You should also know that some of the main individuals that were involved in this, people like Blaine Cooper and Ritzmeyer, Ritzmeyer was actually released, I believe an ankle bracelet, so one of the main organizers of the whole thing was let off early. Blaine Cooper somehow was able to escape. Now think about all the feds those that you see, those that you are aware about, you know, with their particular base they had set up and other ways that the feds might operate. You know, we already know about government surveillance. We're in a surveillance society. Why would they not be surveilling and tracking using cell phones? We can also see the tactical incompetence. We can see things regarding Eamon Bundy that don't seem right. Okay, so you prepared for this thing, but you're encouraging people to come and be a part of this, bring you supplies, put themselves on the radar. And this actually takes us back to whatever really happened on the ranch. There's also a man by the name of Ryan Payne. And he was, he was there denouncing the Oath Keepers because they stepped back from the operation. He was actually calling them agent provocateurs. And he was talking about a concrete plan in action to deal with the BLM. And according to his recent testimony, they had no real plan. That was just something that was said, for whatever reason, to the people that were there. Now, I want you to think about this. Why would certain people act in such a confident way? in some of these situations, showing themselves to be somewhat relaxed, you know, and, and almost going along with a script. Now, notice how long this whole thing went on in Burns, Oregon. It went on and on and on. I suggest that this was a government operation, a honeypot, to see what type of people it would attract. 
And there's a reason why they don't want to release the 15 informants. 15 is a large number, and that's what came out in trial. What would be the purpose for not releasing the names of the 15 informants? Could it be that some of the names of the 15 informants are already suspected informants? I'll also share that this podcast series that I did last winter, every bit of it, and perhaps this video as well, they were all demonetized. I actually have a list that YouTube sent me of a lot of different videos that were demonetized. Anything dealing with the Middle East, World War III, China, internet shutdown, things of that nature, sensitive topics, cyber attacks, false flags, government informants and agents, North Korea, ISIS. Various topics are obviously red flagged. And for whatever reason, videos discussing the PSYOPs angle of Burns organ standoff psyops and there were others that were using the same keywords to expose what they were seeing from their live streams and I think that's all very very interesting there are people involved in this particular situation people like Anna Von Ritz there's actually another person who's known to be a fake judge by the name of Bruce Doucette and there's a couple others as well. These are individuals behind the scenes that were steering things in a certain direction. Of course, with Bruce Doucette, they're talking about the, the common law grand jury, self-appointed grand jury. And like in Costilla County, where Bruce was previously, where I covered the war on off the grid living there, where Bruce Doucette made an appearance about a month or two before Burns. And I believe that they failed in riling the people up of Costilla County to the point where they formed a militia and it seemed that that was their intention. So before Burns even kicked off, I was concerned that Bruce Doucette and another individual who brought him, I was concerned that they were government informants bringing their brand of sovereign ideology, common law ideology, continental Congress of the United States in particular is what Bruce claimed to be a, a judge under. That jurisdiction, that world of law, common law. Unfortunately, he has no track record of helping anyone in any court case at all. And so when you see individuals around where you don't even know if that's actually their real name and they don't seem to have a paper trail, Bruce Doucette, nothing was on him on the internet prior to his... Um, you know, self-proclaimed, you know, might as well written on a crayon a piece of paper, self-proclaimed common law judge status with access to marshals, as he told the people of Costilla County, to, to bait them into having a meeting and then proceeding to take their names. Here, let me take your names. We'll get back to you. And the question is, was Bruce Doucette cultivating a list at that particular time? So, those of you that have researched Burns, Oregon, if you haven't researched what happened in Costilla County, I have videos on my own channel, I have a playlist series, but if you want the written information, go to Off Grid Co. O-F-F-G-R-I-D dot com. Rather, Off Grid Co dot com. Co, short for Colorado, C-O. OffGridCo.com is a database, basically. Dozens of articles of what happened in Costilla County. And you can notice in the timeline, and also go to the last Bastille, research Kyle Reardon's reports, both audio MP3, a few videos, and a lot of written articles summarizing what happened in Costilla County. And he's the only person to date who has written extensively on the fake judge movement unraveling the fact that Bruce Doucette claimed to be a judge only months prior to winding up in Costilla County. So now we jump to Burns, and there's an Oregon Live article about Bruce Doucette going to Burns, Oregon. And a repetition of the very same talking points. We're going to arrest the local officials. So, I believe it's more than likely that they had individuals acting in a manner like Mark Kessler, who admitted to be a, an FBI informant on the Alan Colmes show, and he was a former cop back east, 
And he'd go out on YouTube and fire machine guns and scream about the leptards and come and take it. Come and take it. And he did that. He admits he did that to attract the worst of the worst. Now look at Burns. Look at everything that happened there. And look at what they're not telling us. And people were, were saying, well, they, they've got him down the courthouse. How is it a setup? And I'm like, wait and see. And there's no doubt that the characters, the actors, the participants in this PSYOPs have been well compensated for their efforts. With regards to Lavoy Finnicum, there are certain things that you just don't see regarding his alleged death. And there are things that you simply do not see regarding the aftermath of the shooting, the alleged fatal shooting. And we're talking about the body. And according to those that are reported to be his family members, it was a closed casket funeral because he was shot multiple times in the face, according to the family. And that's, that's not exactly what the video evidence shows, if it is evidence. Think about all the different times that you see a police involved shooting and there's da dash cam footage. You can see the shooting, you can, you can see the details. And sometimes they do this to rile people up. Notice, notice how they left the doors open, if you will, to the wildlife refuge. They left the road open. And I speculate that was there to see what type of militant response would follow this alleged said shooting, fatal shooting of Lavoy Finnicum. And again, he gets out of his vehicle and starts running a certain direction saying, shoot me, shoot me. And then you have all of that, we're here to die. And that's why, and that's why the left media was able to capitalize on it, marginalize individuals, calling them Yao Qaeda because they are making the association. They've done it for years. Between terrorism and being a real patriot. Which is also why it's unfortunate that so many members of the alternative media are so quick to demonize people from other countries calling them a terrorist without realizing how the same game is being played against them. So I think that this is something to study. I think the whole thing, the whole situation, somebody could write a book about this. And I think that uh, her name is Maxine, I forget her last name, she's a journalist for the Oregonian. She's done some of the best court reporting on the whole thing. How many people that were all pumped up when it was the social media thing? You know, to be talking about this and supporting this like a big psychosis. How many people have been following every aftermath detail, including the fact that the, the 15 informants so what I'm telling you is that they make something the narrative. This is popular. This is what's going on. This is where the juice is. This is where the energy is. This is where the revolution is taking place. And the whole thing was a giant with probably use of NSA capabilities to data mine and track and trace and also use Facebook and social media to, of course, through illegal uh, surveillance. But of course, you're on someone else's website. So with Zuckerberg's cooperation, all of those private messages over going here, we're getting these supplies, all of that has been logged. You know, I remember back in the, the Bundy situation, someone suggesting to me back in Portland, hey man, I got some I got some buddies down there, maybe you can drive your, your truck. Yeah, my 85 Toyota truck, it had a lot of radiator problems. Yeah, I'm just gonna drive down to Bundy. And I felt, you know, that that was a setup, that that would be very stupid for people to be showing up at high profile situations, especially those that are run by the government. So I hope people actually take some of this seriously, because I don't think this is the last stand. Now they're making this look like a victory. Okay, the Bundys have been found not guilty. Pete Santilli has been found not guilty. Again, the same guy that had an unregistered firearm in Cincinnati, Ohio, several weeks before he went to Burns, Oregon. And the charges were dropped. And the police captain there won't comment. 
on why the charges were dropped. And so this was really a trial run for something larger. Now that they've convinced the people there's a victory, I think there's going to be a larger event coming. And the reality is, I believe a lot of the land in the United States has been leveraged on the national debt. And this coming war with China and Russia, it's going to be multi-pronged. Part of it is about, in their eyes, getting control over the land that they believe they already have ownership of through deals that have been made that most of us are not aware of. There could be a situation down the line where they lead the American people into a slaughter. Literally. And that's my concern. This has been a, a podcast on the aftermath of the Burns, Oregon court verdict. It is October 28th, 2016. The website is alexansory.tv.